Hello and welcome to Big Orbit's Card 5 Vanguard Weekly Update. My name's James and today I'll be going through the cards shown throughout the past 7 days. Now we have support for all 4 of the clans in the first booster today. Starting off we have Royal Paladin's Conjurer of Mithril. He is a great 2 with Auto Rearguard Circle when placed from hand, cost Counterblast 1 and Soul Blast 1. Search your deck for 1 grade 2 and call it to Rearguard Circle and shuffle your deck. This is generally a pretty good and flexible skill, though the Soul Blast will hurt if you're using it in a Soul Saver deck. This does work well with Little Sage Marin though, essentially allowing you to get two cards through this. It has base power than the usual, but the 9000 power is still the average for Excel and Protect clans, this kind of power isn't going to hurt. It's possible that we'll see an Alfred that still gains some form of advantage through having many rearguards. So this card is going to work a lot better in Blaster Blade and Alfred decks than it will with Soul Save Dragon. Twin Blader is a perfect guard draw trigger for Nova Grappler. There's not much to say as these have been shown for the other clans too, but the draw is going to be great for Excel decks as it helps a lot to fill the ranks. Burst Riser is a grade 2 with the skill of Auto Rearguard Circle when your Vanguard attacks, cost Counter Blast 1 and Soul Blast 1, stand this unit. And if the number of cards in your opponent's damage zone is 4 or more, this unit gets power plus 3000 till the end of turn. This is going to be fantastic combined with Battledore Fighter's effect to make it so your opponent needs two or more Guardians to protect themselves against Battle Riser's attack twice a turn. Needless to say that Riser Custom is also amazing for this card, with them being able to re-stand together. Lastly for Nova Grappler we have Trans Riser. This is a great one with Auto Rearguard Circle when it boosts, costs Tower Blast 2, Counter Charge 1, and if that attack targets a Vanguard, this unit gets power plus 3000 until the end of the battle. This ability is going to be a double-edged sword, as more skills are using the soul these days and you'll likely still want a riser in your soul for perfect riser's ability. Though you could time as well a maximum potential boomerang thrower skill the turn after to soul charge and counter charge. Our second VR for the set is Imperial Daughter. She has a protect marker and her first skill is Auto Vanguard Circle when placed, cost counter plus one, look at the top two cards of your deck, add one into your hand and put the other into the soul or the top of your deck. If you raid a grade three, this unit gets plus 15,000 power and plus one critical until the end of the turn. One counter plus really isn't a big cost for all of that. It's a fantastic skill that just continues to give you more chances of getting triggers in your checks and already has a huge force going when she attacks. Her second skill is Act Vanguard Circle once per turn, cost Soul Blast 1, one of your units gets plus 6000 power until the end of the turn. Now she can give this to herself for overkill, but I'm suspecting it's going to be great for the Silent Tom when it's finally revealed. Now seeing as there is so much to gain from riding more grade 3s now, it would be worth having one or two of the new Victorious Deer in your deck. It's a double R grade 3 with the Protect Marker and has Act, Vanguard Circle, Rearguard Circle, once per turn, cost Soul Blast 2 grade 3s, discard a card from your hand. Look at the 7 cards from the top of your deck. Reveal up to 2 critical triggers from among them. Put the revealed cards to the top of your deck in any order, shuffle the rest of your cards you looked at and put them onto the bottom of your deck. And 6 of your units get plus 10,000 power until the end of the turn. This and Imperial Daughter being used in the same turn is going to be insane, and as Imperial Daughter is also looking at the top two cards, you can put both away from the deck if you please. The chances of you getting two crits on the top of your deck is going to be very likely because of this. At least it's fair in letting your opponent know if you're getting the critical triggers or not. If you're desperate for drawing as much shield as possible, the Triple R Grade 1 Circle Magus can help you out. With her first skill of Auto Vanguard Circle Rearguard Circle, when your drive check reveals a Grade 2 or greater, you may put that card to the bottom of your deck, and if you do, draw a card. It's going to be great for when you're in a bind and you're relying on huge shield, only to draw into Grade 3s. Of course the Grade 3s are going to be useful for their Protect Markers, but sometimes you don't have that much time and you still don't want too many Grade 3s in your hand. She also has Auto when rode upon, cost counter plus 1 and draw a card. I feel like this card is going to be a staple for quite some time in Oracle Think Tank especially this being a grade 1, can stay nice and safe in the back row unless your opponent can retire her with skills. Luckbird is another grade 1, it has 5000 power and auto rearguard circle when placed, costs soul blast 2, draw a card. And this unit gets power plus 6000 until the end of the turn. With all the power ups Oracle Think Tank have been getting, the 5000 power body shouldn't hurt too much as that draw is very worth it. Petal Fairy is a grade 1 with Act, Rearguard Circle, Cost, put this into your soul, look at the top card of your deck and put it to the top or bottom of your deck. If you put a card to the bottom, one of your units gets power plus 5000 until the end of the turn. 
Losing a rear guard isn't too bad, as you should be able to recover it through a draw, and you are gaining soul to fuel your abilities such as luck birds and victorious deers. Another good card that goes into the soul is Oracle Guardian Gemini. It has act rear guard circle. If the number of cards in your damage zone is three or more cost, put this unit into your soul, counter charge one. This is refueling both your main resources, which means this card is fantastic in all Oracle Think Tank builds. Hopefully these soul charges will be good enough to give Luck Bird a nice amount of fuel without stepping on Victorious Deer's feet. Finally for Oracle Think Tank, we have the Double R Grade 2 Promise Daughter. Her first skill is Continuous Vanguard Circle Rearguard Circle during the battle that this unit attacked Vanguard. If the number of cards in your hand is 4 or more, this unit gets plus 6000 power. Her second skill is Continuous Rearguard Circle Guardian Circle. This unit cannot be retired by your opponent's card effects. This will be really nice against Kagero, but it can still be affected by Lock and Paralysis. Though it will be nice to have a strong reliable beta that can only be destroyed by battle. The last clan to go through is Kagero. They also get a VR this week with Dragonic Waterfall. Its first skill is Auto Vanguard Circle when placed, which is when your opponent's grade 2 or greater rearguards and retire it. A free retire is always good, especially as it seems they'll be getting through their counterblast pretty quickly. It also has Auto Vanguard Circle when it attacks, costs Soul Blast 1, grade 3. Until the end of the battle, this unit gets power plus 10,000 and plus 1 critical, and your opponent cannot call Sentinels from hand to Guardian Circle. Suddenly Protect Clans are going to have to not just rely on the gifts they're getting. I'm glad it says Sentinels, as that does make it a lot more fair. However, this is still going to need a lot more shield to protect yourself, as with the Force Gifts, Waterfall is going to be swinging for a huge number. Luckily it's a little slow, as you already need to have ridden a grade 3, and Kegro aren't the best at defense at the moment. But if you can pull their skill off, you're in a very good position to finish the game. As a little bit of assistance to Ward 4, we have the Grade 1 Dragonic Gaius. It has Auto Rearguard Circle when it boosts a Grade 3 or greater, cost counter plus 1 and put this unit into your soul, and the boosted unit gets plus 1 critical until the end of the battle. That combined with Waterfall is going to make your opponent have to guard with most of their hands to stop them from taking at least 3 damage, which will normally be enough for them to lose the game at that stage. We also get to see what the SVRs look like. Unfortunately, they don't show off Perfect Rises SVR art, but we can expect that the background for it will be orange, with that color being commonly associated with Kamui. We'll also be getting different flavor text, hot stamped onto the art, and borderless text is always nice. The character in the artwork is also bigger and cleaner than before. Hopefully we will see Alfred's and Perfect Rises very soon, most likely next week. And that is everything for this week. Be sure to check out next week when all the cards for this set will hopefully be revealed by then. And if we're lucky, we'll get some news about some of the future sets as well. VEBO1, most likely. So I hope to see you next time. Bye.